Thank God for another new day in which you and I will rejoice because it is a day that the Lord has made. The Bible says, This is the day the Lord has made. We will rejoice. We will be glad in it. So, my dear listener, I just want you to know this. This day is not a product of Satan or of the enemy of your soul. It is a day that our Father in heaven has made. And so, by all means, I command you in the name of Jesus Christ, the Son of the living God, receive grace to rejoice and to be glad in it. In Jesus' name, Amen. The Bible says in the book of Lamentations, chapter 3, verse number 22 and 23. It is of the lost mercies that we are not consumed, because his compassions fail not. They are new every morning. Great is your faithfulness. From the very first chapter of the Bible to the last chapter, Precisely, the last verse of the Bible, you will see the mercies and the grace of God at work. In Genesis chapter 1, when planet Earth was covered with darkness and with water, God did not abandon the earth to darkness and to hopelessness and confusion. God stepped in to have the earth redeemed. And I want to let you know, and I want to speak to anyone out there listening to me, whose life appears to have been covered by darkness and confusion and crisis of vision, that the Holy Spirit is still brooding over the earth, still in charge of the church, and has not left this earth. He can reach you, and if you submit to the word of the Lord, the word of the Lord has an inherent power to have you delivered and restored to beauty and glory, just as God, through His Word, restored the earth to beauty and glory. That's the very first chapter of the Bible. The last verse of the Bible says, The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you all. Amen. Can you imagine that? After all the battles, all the failures and shortcomings of nations and different ethnic groupings and individuals in the Bible. At last, the Holy Ghost rounded off the writing of the scripture with the proclamation of the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ unto all that believe. My dear listener, key in to his word and you will see the grace of God walk in your life. Today, I want to preach on the topic, pursue, you will recover. So we will read from the first book of Samuel, chapter 30, from verse number 1 to verse number 8. I read, and it came to pass, when David and his men were come to Ziklag on the third day, that the Amalekites had invaded the south, and Ziklag, and smitten Ziklag, and burned it with fire, and had taken the women captives, that we are daring, they slew not any, either great or small, but carried them away and went on their way. So David and his men came to the city, and behold, it was born with fire, and their wives and their sons and their daughters were taken captives. Then David and the people that were with him lifted up their voice and wept, until they had no more power to weep. And David's two wives were taken captives, Ahinoam, the Jezreelites, and Abigail, the wife of Nabal, the Camelite. And David was greatly distressed. For the people spake of stoning him, because the soul of all the people was grieved. Every man for his sons and for his daughters. But David encouraged himself in the Lord his God. And David said to Abiathar the priest, Ahimelech's son, I pray thee, bring me Hita the effort. And Abiathar brought Tita the effort to David. And David inquired that the Lord said, Shall I pursue after this troop? Shall I overtake them? And he answered him, Pursue, for thou shalt surely overtake them. And without fail, 
recover all. Let us pray. Thank you, Lord, for the reading of your word. Open our eyes that we may behold wondrous things out of your word, and that which we do not know, do thou teach us in the name of Jesus Christ. Father, we secure the heavens and the atmosphere and the environment of my listeners now with the precious blood of Jesus Christ. And we bless your name for who you are in Jesus Christ's name. Amen. As I said before now, the topic of my ministration in this episode of the program is Pursue, you will overtake and recover. We read from First Samuel chapter 30, verse 1 to verse 8. But actually, the message will cover the entirety of chapter 30, which we cannot read through now. This very battle that David fought in First Samuel chapter 30 was the last battle he fought before he was enthroned as king in Judah. And it was a battle, if he didn't fight it, if he didn't win it, his kingship would have been a mess. He wouldn't have entered and stepped into the throne as a full-fledged man. Now, I want you to know this. Some of you are listening to me. God has ordained you for enthronement in different fields of life. But a number of times before such a time of enthronement reaches, the mystery of darkness will always fight sorely to see that you are grievously wounded in order to stop your enthronement or to say, even if you get enthroned, you will not get enthroned with your family. You will not get enthroned as a full-fledged person. You will be enthroned with pains and distress in the inside of you. But I believe God, by the preaching of the word of the Lord, and the move of the Holy Ghost, that you will receive your healing. Now, David, before this time, would have fought a wrong battle in his life, when he ran to Achish, king of Gath, and in the battle that the Philistines came out against the nation of Israel, David allied himself with the Philistines, and pretended to be on their side, and they presented himself as one of them to go to battle against the children of Israel, his own people. Actually, this was a battle in which King Saul was killed. The Bible records that the Philistine lords or kings, when they conferred, they said, no, David will not go to battle with us. Thank God for that decision, because that decision saved David from fighting against his own people, and gave David enough time to return and recover his family and that of his men. Now, if David had gone to that battle against the nation of Israel, David would have fought against his own people, and the repercussion would have been that David would have lost his family and lost his children, and his men would have lost theirs also. My prayer for every listener to this program is, may God grant you grace not to fight the wrong battles of life in Jesus' name. Amen. And may God grant you grace to be on the right side of history in the name of Jesus. Amen. Now, while David and his men were away at the battlefield, their families were at Ziklag. And Bible says that the men of Amalek invaded Ziklag in David's absence, just as Satan invaded the Garden of Eden in the absence of Adam and deceived Eve and took her captive. So the men of Amalek invaded Ziklag in the absence of the men that are owners of the wives and children in Ziklag. And they carried the women and the children and their properties captive and burned Ziklag with fire. And Bible says, when David and his men returned to the camp, they found their camp burnt with fire. Their women, that's their wives, and their children were all carried captive 
The Bible was careful to note that though they were carried captive, yet none of them was killed. Now, Amalek represents certain evils in the Bible. But let us note this. The Amalekites are part of the descendants of Esau, Jacob's brother. The spirit of Amalek is the spirit that exploits our weaknesses and make use of them to fight against us. In Exodus chapter 17, verse 8 to 13, when the children of Israel left Egypt on their way to the land of promise, the first battle they fought was with the Amalekites. And Bible records that the Amalekites came from behind where the weaker part of Israel was. The women, the children who couldn't, I mean, keep pace with the stronger ones. While the men of war were in front, the women and children were behind. Amalek began to attack Israel from the back and exploited that weak part of Israel. Amalek can be conquered by intercession. And that we notice in the battle that the children of Israel fought against Amalek in this Exodus chapter 17. Because Moses had to lift up his hands in intercession and Israel got victory over Amalek. Amalek represents the fleshly man that exploits our natural weaknesses. Amalek represents... The sin that doth so easily beset us. Amalek represents the sins we refuse to cross at the beginning of our spiritual growth and exploits. That we see in 1 Samuel chapter 15. The beginning of monarchy system in Israel. When God asked King Saul to go cross and utterly destroy Amalek, Saul didn't do it. And we notice in the Bible at different places that the spirit of Amalek rises against Israel. Like in this case, and when Haman rose to wipe away the Jews, Haman was also of Amalek. Amalek represents the last enemy you must conquer in your life before God will enthrone you or give you the seat of power. He has for you as a child of God. I don't mean sinners that get into sin in order to become great in life. But I mean a child of God that will attain greatness in life and still make a heaven. There is a particular or there are always certain weaknesses and shortcomings that the Holy Ghost will want you to conquer in your life before you are in throne. Amalek who represents such. Now, Bible says that in the absence of David and the men of war, Amalek invaded Ziklag. Amalek represents those incursion of forces of darkness at our weak moments in order to stop our destiny fulfillment. And Bible says, when David and his men came back and found the city burnt, that David and his men sat down and wept. Now, notice this. They did not cry unto God, but they cried because of pains and distress. My dear listener, there comes a time in your life, you sit down and you re- recollect that there are certain weaknesses of yours sins of your character flaws and faults in your life which you refuse to handle at an early stage and which turn around to handle you and bring losses in your life stop you from going forward retarded your growth and your mates are now ahead of you and you feel greatly distressed in life like David did 
and you feel like weeping or actually weep like David and his men wept. I want to say this. Your tears, your cries because of your backwardness in life, because of your failures and weaknesses, will not bring solution to such deplorable, challenging situations in your life. But your cry unto God, not the difference. Some people cry because of pains and losses. They just cry and emotionally express themselves and have emotional relief. But some people cry unto God and God will hear them. They cry in faith that God is able to help them. Notice this. Don't weep before Satan. But weep before God. Before God, humble yourself and cry. He will exalt you. Before Satan, stand in faith and you will get victory over him. So the Bible says that David was greatly distressed. He, he has lost his family, lost his wives, lost his children, and his lieutenants, his men, are now speaking of stoning him. So David was greatly hot within and without. Those that should comfort him are talking and thinking of how to destroy him after he has lost his wives and his children. You know, there are times in your life, you notice that out of your weaknesses, your inability to handle Amalek and what it represents in your life, you run losses, grievous losses. And people around you that should comfort you or encourage you are only reminding you how stupid you have been in life. The opportunities you have missed. They are talking evil of you and letting you know that your failures and the evils that came on you are as a result of your own making. Such moments are moments of rejection. They are moments of being greatly misunderstood. They are moments of being wrongly accused. But hear this. Refuse to be discouraged. I don't know who is out there listening to me. You've gone through or you're going through such situation in your life. Refuse to be discouraged. Bible says that David in the midst of all this encouraged himself in the Lord. He refused to be discouraged. Hear me. Discouragement is like a man who signs his death warrant when others say you must die you say i agree and you sign it that you must die discouragement is when you agree with your accusers that you amount to nothing in life discouragement is when a man takes an oath swears an oath in the spirit realm that you are accusers and the enemies of your destiny are correct and you are wrong Discouragement is when a man puts his eyes only on the challenges before him hopelessly and refuses to see and receive available help. Discouragement is when a person refuses to go forward because he moved backward as a result of adversities in the past. And that fellow seems to say, the only path I know is a path of backwardness. I refuse to walk in the path. Of forwardness. Discouragement is a decision by a man to die unfulfilled in life. But you can refuse the accusation of the enemy, the accusation of your environment, the accusation of the challenges before you, and encourage yourself in the Lord. Bible says that David encouraged himself in the Lord. Hear me this day. Encourage yourself in the Lord. The miracles you think you lost and which you indeed may have lost are still intact somewhere. They have not been destroyed. The Bible says that the wives and children and property of David and his men were carried away, but they were not killed. God is the one that maintains your portion. The lines shall fall for you one more time. On pleasant places, David took steps to recover what he has lost. Now, what are the steps 
you can take like David to recover whatever you have lost. Number one, refuse to be discouraged. Number two, rise above distress. Number three, encourage yourself in the Lord your God. The Sami said in Psalm 31, 24, Be of good courage. God will strengthen you. Number three, get in touch with God's prophet associated with your life. Or the servant of God associated with your life. Like David did here. He called Abiata the priest and said, inquire of the Lord. Now, if you can get connected to a prophet of the Lord. Bible says, by a prophet Israel was delivered. By a prophet Israel was preserved. When heaven wants to deliver a man from destruction and restore him to destiny fulfillment, God will always bring a prophet in whose mouth is the word of the Lord close to you or across your way. When God wants to secure you from invading evil, God will bring a prophet who has the thoughts, says the Lord, in his mouth, and he will come your way. And here the Bible says, David invited the priest of the Lord and said, inquire of me from the Lord what I should do. And David inquired. So, get in touch with God's prophet. Number four, inquire from God through prayers, through the counsel of God's servants, through the word of the Lord, on what to do. And listen to the witness of the Holy Spirit in the inside of you. Number five, when you inquire from the Lord, get detailed answer from the Lord. Don't just receive one answer and you begin to run. David was detailed. He said, shall I pursue? Shall I overtake? Number six, hear properly from the Lord. David heard properly from the Lord that said, pursue. You will overtake. You will recover. Number seven, arise to action with strong resources around you. David arose to action. Out of his 600 men, he moved with 400 men. They were strong. Drop any resource around you that will be a minus to you and move with those that will be a plus to you. What about those that will be a minus to you? Such resources and men. Commit them to the hand of the Holy Ghost. David kept the other 200 men besides the brook, Bessel. That brook signifies the flow of the Holy Ghost. Number eight, show mercy to your former oppressors. That mercy connects you to greatness. When David met with an Egyptian on the way, he showed him mercy. Number nine, David struck the enemy when the opportunity came. Fight the good fight of faith when God gives you the opportunity. Number ten, David recovered all. As you fight the good fight of faith, you will recover all. But let me ask you, how can you fight the good fight of faith? When you have not given your life to our Lord Jesus Christ. You know, when you have run losses in life, and you are not born again, and you are seeking for a way to recover all, that is the time the devil will take advantage of your spiritual ignorance and blindness and begin to connect you to false prophets. That's the time. Friends and perhaps relations will take you to one satanic native doctor or juju man or some of the fake prophets in town who will ask you to bring water for them to bless, who will ask you to bring money before they pray for you. Let me tell you this. Whenever anybody that answers a man of God begins to demand money from you before he prays for you, that is a sign that that person is not genuine. Yes, you can give offerings in the church, but it is not allowed scripturally for any man of God to tell you, you must give this money, or you must pay this consultation fee before I pray for you. So when you are not born again, you will notice that you will get easily deceived by these false fake prophets. And I want to plead with you this day that nothing is impossible with God. He can restore to you all you have lost. He can restore your lost years back to you. He can lift you up again. 
and show you mercy. But open up your heart to him and receive Jesus into your life as your personal Lord and Savior. Father, I pray for all that listen to me now. Some of them may have wandered into the hands of false prophets. Some of them may have been misled to visit satanic native doctors. Some of them may have made terrible mistakes in life that brought losses their way. I ask you show them mercy, forgive them. As they turn to you now, wash them with the blood of the Lamb of God. And by your finger, begin to restore all that they have lost in life and bring them to higher level of glory in the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you for hearing me and thank you for doing it. We give you all the praise and glory in Jesus' name. Amen. Till the same time next week, this is your brother, Bishop Maxwell, Chimnechetam Korea, saying, God bless you. It's gonna be all right.